Hi, and welcome to this episode of the Morning Tea Marketing Misses, where we offer valuable tips to business owners and sole traders to improve their online presence and communicate more effectively to a larger audience. Your host today is the amazing accredited accessibility auditor. Do you ever say that fast a few times, Narelle? <laughs> <It's> Narelle Gaddy. <laughs> the we have Kate Smith, who is a fabulous graphic designer. Jan Roche, whose business is web designs and over 50, uh, 50s help. And I am Janine Bosper, and I assist people to be able to communicate more effectively. You may not have gathered that from this conversation. <laughs> but that is what I normally do. And have the confidence and belief in themselves to be able to step up to speak out. And today, we've been talking about the last few weeks, we've been talking about product development. And it's Kate's turn to share her expertise on product development. Hey, hey, all. Hey, Kate. Hey, everyone. Yeah, hey, Kate. I wanted to. Hey, Narelle. <laughs> I wanted to take everyone through how I develop products for my clients. So often Ooh. people will come to me and they'll need a banner or a brochure or a flyer, something like this. So not a big branding product or project, but something they need to order and an actual product they need to have in their hand. So I just want to take you through that process quickly. So for each product, I ask a few different questions. One is, what is the purpose of this product? Another is, what is its environment? Who are the audience? What's the content? Because we need to put that on there somewhere. And what's your call to action? What do you want people to do? What? What's the ideal thing that they will do when they um, pick up this item? So I had a client the other day come and they are going to a auction in a few weeks. So we've got, they need a pull-up banner. They've got some wall panels for the booth that they've got at the auction. They need an A5 flyer. And they've also got a half page magazine ad in the, um, the booklet for the auction. So we went through and asked those questions for each object. So if we start with a pull-up banner, we had to think about what's the purpose of this? And so they're a buyer's agent and they said, well, look, not many people there actually will know what a buyer's agent is. Um, so we need it to draw attention because it's a pull-up banner, it's large, it's hopefully there to draw attention, but we also need to educate a little bit. So the purpose was to get attention and educate the crowd so that they don't think they're just talking to another real estate agent, for example. This is a slightly different profession. Um, the environment. So where exactly is this going to stand? How is it going to sit? What parts of it are going to be visible? Is it behind a table or is it out in the open? Is it in front of the stand? And that will affect quite a few things in what we put on it and how we design the layout. Mm. And we thought about the audience. And so they said that's a mix of mums and dads young families and older families as well, retirees. And they said three quarters won't know what a buyer's agent is. So once again, we're like back to that education piece. Mm -hmm. They gave me a bit of content. That was their messaging and what we wanted to express. And then we talked about the call to action. And so they actually came up with this great idea as we were brainstorming for a, a prize and to advertise the prize because really what the object of their um, going to this auction was to get contacts and find more people to educate and talk to about buyers agents and whether that is useful to that person so we've got our call to action to enter the competition so if you work this way with anything you're going to make whether that be a product for your business or some marketing materials like this you can kind of get a more holistic view of what you need to do to execute it then the next thing I do is ask them for the deadline. So this is an event. It has a hard deadline. Mm -hmm. um, I then look at what the time frame is to get such things printed. And then we work backwards from there when we need the different mm -hmm. briefs. So if there's a few people in your organization that need to see the different iterations of this, think about that as well, which briefs you're going to get to whom when, and when you need final cutoff, final approval, so that you can send this to a printer, have your things on time. So this is maybe a bit more of a scaled back version of product development, but I think it's it's a nice bare bones way to get the bare minimum things you need to start this process of developing a product. 
Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, having the date and working back, I mean, obviously that with web design, we, we try and do that, you know, work within a certain time frame or, mm. or they want the thing live and whatever. Mm -hmm. and work. Um, because um, if you're just going to, you know, just throwing it out there, not really having a hard date to work to, Things can drag on. And they really can. You don't cost you all stack more money because you haven't stuck to time frames. Yeah. That's, that's a really good one, Kate. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm. Also, like you guys spoke a lot about audience in your your um product development sessions this month. Um, mm. Narelle, like thinking about if you have any chance that, well, we all have the chance that there's somebody with different accessibility needs are going to be looking at our products you need to really think about how that affects what you're building or designing. And Jan, like, or your clientele are over 50, says it in the name. So there's mm -hmm. special considerations for people in that audience. So yeah, when you're, when you're thinking about your audience, definitely think about their needs and how they're different from other people. Mm -hmm. If your audience is men, maybe you need to look at colours because men are much, well, I think, can women be colourblind, Narelle? Do you know? Yeah, yeah they can. They can. It's just much yeah. It's more not very common, common but they can. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. So little considerations. Know your audience. Mm. But it's yeah, even. But... There's something I was going to ask Kate that um, when you were talking about you know the environment and different things, the colours that you choose and the font type and things. So if you're outside, they'd be very different, wouldn't they? To like it's sitting in doing what we're doing. Sorry, my guide dog's just rocking the chair. Sorry. Um, yeah. it's not funny. It's not good. <laughs> well, it's funny for us. We, yeah. <laughs> Next minute, he'll end up sitting on my lap, and he's a big boy. We well, will see how big the boy is. But oh, stop that rocket! Whoops, hang on. But the color, the color choices that you'd have to pick, and and like everything that that environment part, I'd never really thought about it, but that is such a huge thing in it, whether it's going to be indoors, outdoors, type of lighting. Mm -hmm. How far away are the that. people going to be? So if, yeah. if you've got signage especially, depending how far away the audience will be from it or where you need it to be seen from is going to dictate a lot of your font size, your imagery size. Yeah. yeah. And sticking to your branding colours as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. To go yeah. too far from that. Yeah. yeah. No. You want to, these are the kind of products I'm talking about where you already have an existing brand. If I was doing a branding project, this, mm -hmm. there would be a lot more questions involved. A lot more steps. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. lot more to think about. But once you've got an existing brand and you just need a new product that's going to be out in the world somewhere, these things, purpose, environment, audience, content, and your call to action, mm -hmm. those are the things to consider. And then the deadline's just okay. logistics. And you that's need it not be just with graphic art stuff that that process could be yeah. adapted to nearly everything yeah. that you would a product that you would design or product you want to get out definitely yeah, yeah especially like you were saying Janine you've got your post-it notes that you get lots of different ideas so perhaps mm. you've got an overarching sort of course or a product that you have yeah. and then you've got these smaller courses underneath if you just look at those four options or yeah yeah, questions what and that's one of the things when I teach pitching what is the purpose what's okay. the purpose of, of your product or what's the purpose of doing this pitch to this audience yeah you should often I don't know it's just what <laughs> I do well it's got to have you've got to change it up that's why those scripts don't work you need mm. to have something that is flexible because your audience is different all the time mm. so the yeah. people on the other end of your product is different what what's the product work for them yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We talked yeah. about that for the last month, isn't it? The the different yeah. products and what's out there. Mm. And what how, yeah. to, how to get it out there. Yeah. This has been an interesting month actually, because it's really when you look at it, we started with the uh the investigation side and we've really gone through, you know, the actual the IT and development side and like for you, Jan, the over 50 stuff. Mm. And like we were talking about design and things, and now Kate, you've brought it all together. But isn't it funny? It still comes back to that pattern, doesn't it? Where you is it viable? You test it. You you know you investigate. You design. You test. You implement, and you launch. It's just that pattern, and it doesn't matter what you do, does it? Mm -hmm. It's kind no. of what came to my mind just then. Um, 
Narelle, is when you think along the lines of investors like um, angels, what are they called? Mm. Um, do you know angel investors? Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, yeah. So they yeah. they have a criteria that they go through with businesses and they won't even consider investing unless particular things have been ticked off. And so the product or the, the whatever it is, the business has to already be in the market and showing runs on the board. So for mm. us talking about product development, that's kind of the horse has already bolted then, but mm. um, it's a good thing to think about in that if these guys, the, obviously they know what they're talking about, there are things that they look for and their must-haves um, that are critical for them making their decisions if we as business owners or if we're thinking about developing a new product or a new service or whatever it might be, we mm -hmm. need to really sit back and think about the process and make sure we're covering off on the really important stuff mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. sure it can be tweaked after, you know, like with analysis, like I was talking about after launch, we can analyse how things have gone and how they're going and always keeping in front of the market. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's some really important um tips to take from that and you need to also log the process because you know that's you're doing qa you call it assurance if you are then looking at maybe selling down the track you've got all that like you said the looking for investments investments and now a lot of this you can do through blockchain as well so that's a whole different space and that leads into what we're going to be talking about next month which is technology mm -hmm. and a whole different things a lot of things coming out that we or that we use that we might be able to be able to share with the audience as to you know ideas that could save you some time and some money and you know things that are moving through very very quickly and yeah. your blockchains that's just one and we think it's crypto currency for that but it's it's not it's in systems and processes and mm, once it's yeah. locked in it's it's becomes yep. the way it is mm. Mm, mm. yeah yeah cool, cool. Oh, no again it's been a great month thank you ladies thank you yeah. now Always great audience this is what you've got to do <laughs> you've got to find us on youtube subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other any other videos that come through or conversations you then have to give us some feedback how we're going knowing that there's an audience out there and then what we'd love you to do is also share it widely that other people can find us and that they can you know, maybe pick up some of the great little golden nuggets that we've got so we can help them with their business or their as we've been talking for this last month is product development is that right? So that's the instructions. You got it? Got it. Is that clear? Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I know you thought, well, four of us have got it. <laughs> One of oh, we really appreciate any any assistance that you give us getting this message out there because we we put out time in and, and to do this purely so we can get the message out there and, and hopefully help other people, small business owners, sole traders, people who are stepping out in business to be able to get their message to market as quickly as effectively and have the successes that we would love to see for people as well. Mm. Cool. All right. I look forward to our conversations on technology next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. See you next week. Bye.